Good morning. I am smiling. This is the 1.5 liter Mazda 3 hatchback. Oh, I know I didn't I didn't get to drive this uh, early on. I mean, I've I've driven the sedan, all right. And this is the hatchback. In terms of handling, they don't differ much, in my opinion. But I personally just love the looks of the hatchback. If you are buying a Mazda 3, do me a favor, get the hatchback. Okay, so this is the 1.5 liter variant, and as you can see, instead of chrome, it's black out over here. I I really dig the looks of this, even though I think the chrome one looks good as well. This new Mazda grille really works. Okay, same slim headlamps, but in terms of um, look at this little bulb here. Yes. Uh, it comes out with a old school yellow light. I think the first thing I will do with this car is um, I'm gonna ask the salesman, can I change the bulb to a white color one instead of a yellow one? Um, does it void, void my warranty? And just get the bulb, the bulb swapped out, all right? I just don't really like the yellow lights when it's turned on, okay? The rims, these are obviously smaller, okay, Yokohama tires, 16 inch, now 16 inch used to be alright for cars back then, but now all these modern cars with their wide wheel arches, um, they are decidedly small, okay. Now this colour doesn't really show the contours of this car, you will notice that this car is devoid of any lines on the body. But if we come to this direction, from the curvature of the reflections, okay, I just move my camera around, you will see the curvature of the reflex reflections changed. All right, this is very, very daring because in order to stem the bodywork to have a consistent curve, consistent contour, it's really not easy for Mazda to do that. And why they even go to such lengths. Uh, this is the new evolution of their <coughs> Kodo design language, where <coughs> I would say it harks back to the era of the 50s era where cars are swoopy and and nice instead of those hard lines that has been around all modern cars recently. I think all of us have gone tired, tired of them. Now this is a nice design touch. This chrome line, this window line that just swoops up like that. This divides opinion. You know, some people will be like, why don't they just make the window line like that, like that, like that? You know, that would make the car look normal I would say and this gives it character this gives the car a very strong character only Italians would do that in fact this looks like an Alfa Romeo in every way of course Alfa, Alfa Romeos aren't that well built okay Skyactiv G 1.5 liter engine I think this is the only 1.5 engine in the segment or in the market all right in the segment yes C, C, C segment doesn't have a 1.5 liter apart from the Civic 1.5 Turbo but this 1.5 NA has to be one of the most enjoyable 1.5 NAs out there and look at the clamshell bonnet look at the bonnet that actually is a clamshell so what Mazda did is instead of one cut line that cuts across and then the bonnet just opening like that they trim it up like that and it gives for a more unified look a nicer design if I may say that. Uh, Mazda cars are just, they put so much emphasis on design these days. Their cars are really, really beautiful. Okay, and then the boot release is housed under this thing. It's an electronic release, okay. Not a huge boot. If you want a huge boot, you go for the sedan, but come on, get the hatchback, okay. This boot size is similar to that of a um, <coughs> XV. There is a huge load lip 
okay? But why let a load lid spoil your design, right? Um, this is decidedly simple, okay? Just one strap like that. Of course, if they put in the CX-5 one, that would be pretty brilliant. The one that hooks up all the way here, okay? No complaints here, apart from the fact that it is a small hatchback. Now, <clears throat> the biggest thing about this Mazda now has been the torsion beam, right? They said that, oh, uh, in order to liberate more space for the rear passengers, they opted for torsion beam. And then you hop up the car, and then you, you, you start wondering, where's the sacrifice I made? that you promise, all right? It is still a small car compared to the Civic, compared to the Corolla, compared to almost every car in this segment, it is still tight at the back here, okay? Key of which is the roof line. <coughs> the roof line dictates how I sit. Uh, I'm five foot 11, so the roof line actually is about two, three fingers, two fingers away from my head, so I have all right headroom, but when I close the doors, look at that. It's a very, very narrow window. So in the car, you have that dark, cozy ambience. Um, it's not a car designed to let you have airy feeling, you know. There's no denying it. It is a car that wants to make you feel that, you know, your cocoon. But... Without, look at this, see I have to open the door for more light to come in. Without this indentation, the seats will be touching my knees. Alright, of course I'm going to sit like that. So I can slot my feet underneath, I can barely squeeze my size 11 foot in between the base of the seats and the base of the rail of the front seats. There is a centre tunnel here because um, this car in, in a lot of market, North American, Canadian market, they have the all-wheel drive variant, okay? This one has fabric seats because this is a 1.5 litre, all right? Now, previously, Mazdas, when you hop up the front passenger compartment, you will feel it's very well appointed, um, very nice finishing. And then you come to the rear, it lacks somewhat of that, that fine detailing. There are no aircon vents here. There are no aircon vents here. But I think you've heard uh, if you've watched some of my other videos, I've reviewed more than a thousand cars in my channel. Okay, um, small hatchbacks, I never complain about it, whether having aircon vents or not towards the rear passengers. All right, this round Mazda put in quite some investments when it comes to the rear door panels. Okay, you go to a Mazda 3, touch everything here every single thing here, touch it, feel it, and then you hop into an A-Class, the new A-Class from Mercedes, you will feel there is a serious downstep from the Mazda to the Mercedes-Benz. Yes, this is by far more expensive, more well-built, more solid than that of the A-Class, okay? Yep, you have a small opening for the uh, door panels at the back here. No, cons consider the size of the car. This is actually very well done. Most cars, their rear door panels, they can only afford to put a little hole, put a bottle there. This one, yeah, this is pretty good, all right? And I love this handle where you can slot your palms in, very comfortable. Leather here, soft touch, soft touch, soft touch, leather. But again, my same complaint, <coughs> Since this is not plastic, why put it in a color that is similar to plastics? Change the color. Of course, in global variants, you will have red color appointed. Inlays, their yeah, inlays are leather, all right? Uh, there are white color ones, but in Malaysia, knowing Malaysians, well. One thing you will notice that, that makes it very, very different from cars in this segment is this thick door panel over here. And it feels really good when you put your hands over, over here. Another thing I want to talk about is the window control buttons, all right? This, is, this has got to be the highest quality window control buttons in a segment. In fact, 
everything here just feels like something from uh, the level of BMWs and Audis. Okay, now this strip here, if I don't remember wrongly, in the CX3 and other cars, right, it is actually satin chrome metallic. This one is painted plastic. Okay, you can immediately feel it. This is plastic that has been painted in silver color. Why? Mazda has to optimize cost. Okay, because they spend so much in this car, they really rationalize everything. Now, the 1.5 doesn't come with power seats. It's a manual uh, adjustment seat, but this has got to be the best one out there. Do you notice the seat angle? Most of the time, when you are in a car that is low spec, manual seats, right? They only allow you to move in and out, and then up, uh, and then this one, right? This one, you notice the angle? Because I'm able to adjust this. I mean, if all manual seats are like that, I don't mind. Because this is the biggest thing, even in, 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 to me, in terms of seat comfort. Even some cars with powered seats, right? You don't get to adjust this, this angle. This angle actually is very, very important in making sure you're comfortable, okay? And just now, when I was seated at the back, I managed to slot my feet underneath the seat. In fact, this is at its lowest setting, okay? I actually like to sit low, depending on the car. Certain cars with a long hood, I will want to sit higher, but, okay, this is the highest setting. But this car with a short, basically it's a small car, I will want to sit low. If I were to adjust the seat up, you will, you will notice that I get a lot more leg room now. Way more. And I haven't adjusted the seat base of the seat. That means it, I didn't move it up front. All I did is just to adjust uh, the height of the seat. And you can see it liberated so much space to the rear passengers here. Okay? So it depends on how you sit. And uh, every time I go in and out, my head will be brushing against this because the, the inside is about that much in terms of how low this is versus how much space I have remaining in there. Okay? Get away, mosquito. Ouch! Move it back to my sitting position. Wow! There's a lot of adjustments here. Okay. The buttons. First of all, it feels flat. So when you when you put your palm over here, it doesn't come in your way in any way. And then, let me start the car first. Okay. There's a screen in the middle here. And once the screen comes up, you will notice that the digital dial or digital screen versus the analog dials almost have an imperceptible difference when it comes to the uh, legibility and the level of luminosity. Okay, very, very well done. Um, you go into a Hyundai and you will see that there is a bright screen over here. I suspect this is using OLED maybe, I'm not sure, but the dark parts are really consistent and that is really, really well, 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 well done from Mazda. Okay, the steering wheel feels great, everything feels great. Now, back to the window buttons. This one, press it like that to adjust, you know. Uh, how do I put this on and off to adjust it? This is just so well done. All right, and then the feeling, the tactile feeling of the buttons. Oh, crap. Oops. Oops. This thing came off. Uh, the windows open rather high speed, okay. <laughs> Sorry for that. So if I press this, then the window, the, the, the mirrors will fall. Yeah, everything. Very high speed, very powerful window buttons, uh, window motors. Okay, now back to the entire dashboard. Okay, this round Mazda removed the touchscreen. This is an all new system and in fact when you are seated nicely here, you won't be able to touch the screen. It is intentional. This is made intentional so that you don't attempt to actually 
do anything here. You just concentrate on driving. In fact, Mazda this round, they want drivers to concentrate on driving. They want the whole car's ambience to focus on showing you that it is all about the drive. They put a heads-up display in this base 1.5 liter variant. Right, you have a heads up display, you have a digital cluster over here where you can change, uh, you can press this button. This button feels really good. All right, to change everything, parameters that you're trying to look at. Lovely. All right, so it has lane departure warning, I presume, because it's showing this. Okay, and the infotainment system looks as though it's black and white, but actually it's not. They reduce everything to its most minimalistic so that it doesn't it doesn't command much attention when you're driving. Okay. Everything just just feels fantastic inside here. And then when you look at it over here, this is leather, leather, soft touch. Everything is soft touch. Okay. So three years ago I mentioned that Mazda is now behaving like a premium brand. I think I made a video about it and a lot of people laugh at me and here you go. Look at what Mazda is doing now. All right, the, the steering wheel. Do you get a nicer steering wheel from this segment? No. I, I watched a video, I forgot whether it's from Savage Geese or um, from, which was the other guys, the Canadian car reviewers. Um, they were saying that these buttons are hard to press. Right, the volume up and volume down buttons are hard to press. Um, they got it wrong actually because how Mazda designed it is that the buttons register with a toggle. So yes, technically you can just press directly, but why they raise this part is because when you are driving, right, this gives you a kind of um, touch sensitive because you get to touch the physical bulge of this right so when you're driving all you need to do is just to push up and push down to volume up and volume down instead of having to press this little button over here that's not for you to press it's actually using this to toggle all right they got it wrong even when you go next song previous song just push this up or down very very user friendly and then when you want to mute it just press in the center just press it to mute it very very easy all right even the the, uh, these buttons are all set in chrome. Very nice materials. Okay? Then when it comes to this, they call it what? Mazda Command now. Alright? Uh, or Mazda Connect. Anyway. Um, this one is just like the BMW iDrive. Right? Shortcut buttons over here. And you will notice that when you press any buttons over here, it's almost absolutely silent. Mazda has told us about this before, that they're big fans of BMWs. And these buttons feel just like BMW ones, whereby when you press, it's silent. It's completely silent. Alright? Same goes with these. When you're, when you're touching these. Alright? Very easy. It's interesting, they put dedicated buttons for the aircon mode instead of letting you um, press the same button and then you toggle through it. Um, different ideology. Alright? Now, you look at the two aircon vents. There are two aircon vents here seemingly pointing to the passenger and then two aircon vents angled towards the driver be like oh what about the rear passengers um yesterday who was sitting behind i forgot and um i blast the aircon and he was like okay i feel the air so maybe they've done some studies to it all right there are these even these buttons up here everything feels upmarket compared to the segment it is in all right uh, it's padded inside here, very nice. Basically, the whole theme of the interior is just dark. A very dark theme. Now, this whole part, they have done so much work to it. Okay, previously, you have the cup holders over here, right? In between the armrests, and then the armrests are smaller. Now, they've done their redesign this is one of the this has got to be one of the best design center consoles out there okay it's not as sophisticated as some of honda's uh, magic stuff that move around but this one is so logical and uh, it's so easy to understand what they're doing here now this is a very very wide opening for your center console okay 
In fact, a Note 10 Plus can be put diagonally with some room to spare. That's very good. There's a USB port over here, so you can power your, your phone. And there's an, there's an angle over there so that you can put your phone like that. Just now as I was putting ways and all that, I was putting it that way. And it's rubberized, okay? You can put your cups here. Uh, in the middle is actually, sorry for that. In the middle is actually open up so you can put further stuff. So you put your wallet and things like that. Okay, then you have your gear lever. This whole part is soft touch, very, very soft. It's leather and it's sponged, so you feel really great resting your, your knees next to it. In fact, it feels like an extended armrest where sometimes even you put your hands here. But the only other car that has leather wrap over here are the S90s and the XC90s and some other European cars, luxury cars mostly. No, only luxury cars would do that. Okay, then the armrest. You slide it at first, you take your stuff you can reach them easily or when you want to open up the whole thing after you slide it it opens up like that now why okay this is a huge armrest in order to, to to have a huge compartment you need a huge lid and if you open up the lid directly it's gonna take up this much space right it's gonna intrude into your and it's that in terms of motion it's not gonna feel nice okay so what they did is you can slide it and then go like that. However, when you're doing this, do take note if the rear passenger isn't aware, his or her legs are there and you're just gonna press on her or him. Okay, here you have a separator. You can remove it, you can put it at the last slot so that you get a lot of space. There's a USB port here, 12 volt socket over here. And then you get, I think that's the SD card slot. All right, it's carpeted as well. Very nice. Yep, that's the interior of the new Mazda 3. Okay, I really like this finishing, how they ang angle this whole thing instead of just putting a tablet straight away square like that. All right, so all this feels really, really good. You can see how soft they are. Feels great to the touch, but I would love it if it's not in this color. If it is in brown color or red color, it will give the car a totally different ambience. Right, so let's continue.